Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hello and welcome to Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists with me, Diana O'Carroll. This week we deal with the problems that weren't quite solved at Copenhagen. My name is Jenny Boyd. I live in Edmond, West Virginia, United States. My question is, how is carbon output, carbon emissions measured for various countries And how accurate are those measurements? How can you measure enormous quantities of something that simply floats away? I'm Greg Marland. I'm at the Environmental Sciences Division, Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the U.S. Actually, I think there's a misconception that CO2 emissions are measured. What you try to do is to measure how much fuel is burned. And if you know how much carbon is in the fuel, you can calculate how much CO2 must be produced and very seldom is that in fact measured, although there are some large power plants in which they actually put measurement devices in the smokestack and can measure the amount of CO2 that comes out. That is unusual. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has published a five-volume set of guidelines that all the countries now use as part of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change is for estimating emissions of all greenhouse gases, and it does produce uniformity across countries. The error margin depends on the country and on the greenhouse gas. I think the interest is in partly on carbon dioxide emitted from energy systems, and in that case, it really depends on how much a country invests in collecting energy statistics. For a country like those in the EU or the U.S. or Japan, my guess is that the error margin is something on the order of plus or minus 5%. For those discharging smaller quantities of, of CO2, the error bars, I, th- I think, can be as high as 20 25%. And there are some very large countries. In China, we've actually published the estimate that the error may be as large as 15 or 20%. And Greg also said that a major problem countries face in adding up their CO2 emissions is where to charge them if the fuel is bought in one country but burned in another. So if you board a plane in the UK bound for the USA and the fuel has been bought in the UK but it's expended over the Atlantic, whom do you charge the CO2 to? At the moment, the International Convention is to charge this CO2 to no one and they estimate about 3.1% of global emissions don't appear in international accounts because of this. That's on the order of a billion tonnes of CO2. And on the forum, Sean B and Z both agreed with our expert that fuel accounts are used as a proxy for CO2 emissions. And on to another problem that's difficult to measure with next week's question. My name is Luke McNeil and my question is, it's often said that people resemble their pets or vice versa. Is this a phenomena that has been studied? Do people choose pets that resemble them or is this a matter of us noticing when people do resemble their pets and forgetting when we see people who do not resemble their pets? Do we look like our pets? I've been thinking about getting a ginger dog, actually. Maybe it's so that we're teased equally. Answers to chris at thenakedscientists.com or on the forum, and that's thenakedscientists.com forward slash forum. Question of the Week is part of the Naked Scientists podcast and supported by the EPSRC, the Wellcome Trust and UK Fast. Look us up online at nakedscientists.com.